It's your man Jay Gray's report, and welcome to the College Football Weekly Preview, Week 7. Y'all know how we get it in, so let's get it in. Preview on the top five ball games of the weekend, so let's get right to it. Now, I know you boys checking out this crushed velvet I got on. This is only strictly for the players, bruh. You can't get you one of these unless you got a player's card, and you got to be able to wear one of these joints with it. <laughs> And so, since you can't get the player's card, just watch me do this. Hey, let's go on to the first ball game. Now, first ball game, we got, we're going out to the Pac-12. We got number 18, UCLA, goes out to Palo Alto to play the number 15, Stanford Cardinal. Now, UCLA comes into this ball game averaging 34 points a game, putting up 454 yards a game. Stanford on the other side of the ball, averaging. 35 points a game, putting up 452. So both these offenses can go, can do work. Here's the problem. Jim Moore has lost four straight to these does. <laughs> now, Jim Moore has lost four ball games to these dudes. They got blasted last year, 31-10. Each of the losses that UCLA have suffered from these boys is because they can't stop the run. Every loss, they've averaged, Stanford have been able to average 192 yards on the ground. That's a problem because UCLA now has four cats, four of their main cats out on defense. Mossy Johnson was just went out last week. They was dug, gave up 353 yards to Arizona, turned around and gave up 192 to uh, Arizona State all on the ground. That's a problem, bro, because... Stanford has a running back, Christian McCaffrey, who's carried the ball 105 times for 603 yards, bro. That's a problem. You can't. Do I'm going with Stanford to win this ball game. They playing in Palo Alto. All I'm asking, Jim Moore, go ahead and let uh, Justin Cone go, Cone going out there and play. His old man been up in the locker room trying to fight all. All the coaches upset. Hey, you know, I already dropped the charges on this old man. Let that dog get his mouthpiece wet. <laughs> Just let him get his mouthpiece wet. All you got to do is get you one of the dog old graduate assistants. Tell him to make sure he keep his mouthpiece in and his helmet on. And on the opening kickoff, just push that dog out on the field. <laughs> Either he going to tackle a boy or get ran over. Either way, he going to get his uniform dirty. Let's move on to the next ball game now. Let's go down to the SEC. We got number 10, Alabama, goes out to Cal Field to play number 9, Texas A&M. Now, Alabama comes into this ball game averaging 34 points a game, putting up 435 in yards a game. Texas A&M coming off of a bye, averaging 39 points a game, putting up 480 yards a ball game. Alabama has won the last two. Including a 59 and nothing drubbing of these boys down in Tuscaloosa. Now, Reggie Ragland and company. Defense, they got the sixth ranked defense in America. These boys ain't playing. Probably got the best front seven in the country. So, Kyle Allen, who been putting in work for Texas A&M, coming off two consecutive ball games of 300 yards or better. That's going to be a problem. Somebody going to have to give. They got the 20th ranked offense in America. These boys got the 6th ranked defense in America. Who's going to win this ball game? Alabama got their backs to the wall at this point because they've already lost the ball game. They can't lose again. They lost the old dull Ole Miss early in the season. Now they can't lose. I'm picking Alabama to win this ball game primarily because old Doug Nick Saban is not going to let these boys lose because he's not trying to hear from the good old boys this week Tell him that he should be winning, playing for a national championship. It's not going to happen. Alabama wins this ball game, and then they go back down to Tuscaloosa and give me some of that Dreamland barbecue and send it back this way. <laughs> hey, that's the best barbecue in town. Now, let's move on to the next ball game. We got, we're going out to South Bend. We got USC struggling <laughs> coming into town to play number 14, Notre Dame. Now, let's stop right there, bro. USC comes into town in first class in the front of the plane. They got a seat missing. Oh, Dusty Sarkeesian would not be there. So that does Viagra and his dog on Mad Dog 2020 go have to wait. <laughs> 
remember that damn talking about he he he, he mixed his, his alcohol with his pills. And he had that mad dog 2020 and that dog on behind me. It caused all kind of problems for a boy. <laughs> he showed up at practice in, in the in the in the in the training facility last week, dude. He got out the car with Rollo, Bubba, and Grady. Had his shoes on the wrong feet. Stumbling around, talking crazy. I told you at the beginning of the season, when they had these boys ranked in the top 10, that they weren't going to be any good because that dumb was unstable. He had already gone to the doggone kickoff event, cussed everybody out, talking crazy, kept his job. I don't know how in the world he's able to do that. But no way. Notre Dame beats the brakes off these boys. Why? Because you got a cat named CJ Precise. That is the real deal. He running all over these boys. Then you got... Deshaun Kaiser, the Black Dutchman, or German, whichever whichever you feel more comfortable with. Most importantly, Touchdown Jesus is going to be able to stay at the administration building this weekend because USC is coming in all distracted, dumb. But I will say this. The last time they came to South Bend, it was two weeks after old Doug Lane Kiffin got fired in the middle of the season, they lost the ball game to Notre Dame 14 10. But Ed, Ed, um, Ed Ogeron ended up winning six out the last, next seven, and they still didn't give him the job. That goes back to Pat Hayden. Didn't get it done the job. Went out, got st- Doug Steve Sarkeesian, who everybody in Seattle knew that Doug was a problem drinking that snake oil. And now he in here got you all embarrassed. I say, Pat Hayden should be fired for being dull. Hiring a boy he knew had problems. Now, let's move on to the next ball game. Let's go out to the SEC. We got number eight, Florida. Goes down to Death Valley this weekend to play number six, LSU. Now, here's the problem. Florida comes into this ball game averaging 32 points a game, putting up 384 in terms of yards. LSU is averaging 37 points a game, putting up 468. Here's the problem with Florida. Florida old dumb will grip. Get out there, test positive for PED. Now, what I'm trying to understand is why is a freshman taking PEDs and what is that going to happen with on the field? Now you're going to put your boys in a bad situation. Florida was rolling 6 and 0, come in, great defense, but now you got to have Trayon Harris to uh, start. He hadn't started, well, he started one, one game beginning of the season, but. That's a problem. Everybody's discombobulated. Then you get DeAndre Porter, special team cat freshman. Go out there. This done gets arrested today for shooting his gun toward his girlfriend, pregnant girlfriend. Four felony counts. They all discombobulated. They going to come in the Death Valley and get the brakes. No, they ain't going to get the brakes beat off of them, but they going to lose this ball game. Mike the Tiger roars in Death Valley because you got Lillard, Farnett, who is the real deal? Now, he struggled a little bit last week against South Carolina. But so Brandon Harris had to prove the boys that he could throw the football. He was 18 of 28, 228 yards, two touchdowns last week. So most people were saying, can this guy do what he needs to do in the event that boys shut uh, Fournette down? He took care of business. I'm not worried about him. So we're going to keep on moving. LSU wins this ball game. Now, let's go to the big ball game. We're going up to Ann Arbor, Michigan, to the Big Ten. We got number seven, Michigan State, comes in to play number 12, the Michigan Wolverines. Now, Michigan State comes into this ball game, in my opinion, struggling. They haven't looked good. They 5-0. They undefeated, but they haven't looked good all season. They've been dubbed. They averaging 31 points a game, putting up 397 a game. Michigan is averaging 29 points a game, putting up 390 a game. They blasted Michigan last year 35-11. They've been hollering and screaming upset because Michigan calls them the little brothers, and so they've been dominating Michigan over the last five or six years. That's about to change, bro, because your boy Jim Harbaugh has come in. He's putting in work. Do you realize that Michigan – has the second ranked defense in America in terms of total defense, and they number one in America in terms of scoring defense. These dudes have p- pitched three straight shutouts. And the fact that Jim Harbaugh is not playing with these boys, 
He got all these boys wearing them doggone khaki pants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last weekend, now he's doing a hell of a job of coaching because he got all the brothers wearing khaki pants. But after the game, he had to rush three of them down to the emergency room because they broke out in hives. <laughs> I told you brothers can't wear no khaki pants, bruh. If you find me 10 brothers in all of America in khaki pants, I will give you $100. <laughs> so what they did this week, they bathed them joints in their old school Epsom salt and put the calamine lotion on them. Now they ready to wear the dog on khaki pants because they winning in the khaki pants. Michigan wins this ball game and Michigan State officially becomes little brother again. It's your man Jay Gray's report. From the jgravesreport.com, or you can hit me up on Twitter at jgravesreport so you can holler at your boat.